So lately I've been talking about things I wish someone would have told me a long time ago. And there's a lot of things people don't tell you about trading. There's a lot of these, uh, excuse me, my phone's still on. There's a lot of these get rich quick gurus out there with the Lambos and everything. And believe me, these guys are no better than you or me. And I think it was last week or whenever I, I probably mentioned that some of them are probably headed for jail. <laughs> there was a crackdown. They they got a little too cocky. And one group in particular, and they're being sued for $121 million. But anyway, don't get caught up in that hype. Nobody knows what a market will do, like I said last week, exactly. And all representative systems will sort of look the same. And somebody was nice enough to send me a hedge fund that trades crypto. And they were kind of secretive in how they did what they did. And the bottom line is nobody has a secret to the market. I'd be anxious to see how they do longer term. So by representative samples looking alike, if you're trading a breakout system, you're going to have a high failure rate. Unless, of course, you get in one of these rip-roaring bull markets that comes along every three or four weeks in crypto. If you're trading pullbacks, it's going to act a certain way or trend following in general. If you're trading reversion to the mean, good luck. It's going to work until they don't. But anyway, I woke up a few weeks back and I thought about the things that I wish someone would have told me. And these were the 20 things that I wrote down. If you go back about four or five weeks, I kind of ran through those really quickly. And since then, I've been taking my time and thinking about every time I go to take one off my list, which I took one off the list tonight, I think about two or three other things. But one thing that I often preach and teach about is you're going to spend most of your time waiting. and that's something that you're going to have to get used to. One theme that I often talk about is how the real world trains you to be a very poor trader. In the real world, you can't sit around all day and do nothing. You have to produce something. You have to work. You have to do something. And also another, not to go too far off on a tangent, imagine that, but another thing that I often talk about is for years, I couldn't understand why these successful people, sometimes highly successful people, we just picked such shitty stocks in the market. And a psychiatrist actually, who was a client, she actually emailed me and, and she says, I think I have the answer. And, and paraphrasing her is, in the real world, you have to take whatever train wreck comes along, even though helping them, so to speak, might do more damage than good. A friend of mine's a, a, a podiatrist, uh, he's a client too. And he was telling me, he said, this is what my morning looks like. And he sends me a picture of this black, leg and i showed it in one of my presentations and I'm, i would never show it again it's kind of ugly <laughs> obviously and this thing was huge and just it turned black from like the black death and so if he goes to do surgery on this this poor woman then he could actually hurt her she could possibly lose a leg but if he doesn't do anything she's definitely going to lose a leg so you have to take whatever train wreck comes along even though you might do more harm than good so life trains you, especially if you're successful in life, to be a bad trader. But the bottom line is, he who waits wins. Now, there's a couple types of patience. I think this comes from trading full circle. You're waiting for the market to come to you. And, and let me tell you something. I need to put a big sign in my office. Wait, let the market come to you. I can absolutely print money if I let the market come to me, okay? I'm not bragging. I could do it. The problem is I give up a lot of money trying to outsmart the market, trying to, and most of, most of these bad behaviors relate to like intraday trading. So if I'm sitting there watching the screen all day, like I think it was Ed Sakota said, having a quote machine on your desk is like having a slot machine on your desk. You're going to want to feed it. But even with the intraday stuff, if I could wait and wait and wait, and it might take a week, it's like, just walking over and like Jimmy Rogers says, just walking over the corner and picking the money up. The problem is I'm not that patient most of the time. <laughs> but as far as position trading goes, I am. And that's from years and years and years of doing it. And what I do, if you're on the trading service, sometimes I bore you to death. It's bad for business. It's a horrible business to be in because when there's nothing to do, I don't recommend anything. And I can go weeks and sometimes a month. I think I think my record that just by chance I noticed was like 56 days with no recommendations. Nobody wants to pay somebody to tell them to do nothing. But guess what? That 
might actually help you out because there's no need to go in and take mediocre setups during that time. It does put a little pressure on me to perform, obviously, once the market does get going, but knock on wood, over time, things have done really well. So you're either waiting for the market to come to you, and then once you're in a position, you're waiting for the market to move. And I used to get out of dead money positions all the time. And if you watch these presentations, you know I do a lot of webinars where I talk about dead money, how you get into a position and then it just kind of dies out and goes sideways. Doesn't stop you out, but it just goes flatline forever and you get bored with it. Many, many years ago, I remember one that did exactly just that for about 20 something days, which is well over a month. I think it was six weeks total. Didn't stop out, but didn't hit the IPT, didn't even move then I'd be willing to bet 99% or 95% at least of my clients got out the way, decided that, ah, this thing's dead money, I better get out. And then the stock got bought out. There's been many of those examples since then too, but that's one that really sticks out in my mind. Now, when I was putting this together, I was looking at some old slides and you always get something good out of Jesse Livermore. It was never my thinking that made mon made the big money for me. It was always sitting. Now there's different kinds of sitting. They're sitting, letting the market come to you. And there's also sitting once you're in a position, letting things unfold and not looking at it as dead money. Once you start quoting Livermore, it's hard to stop, hard to stop. Money is made by sitting, not trading. And that's once you finally do catch that big winner. Don't give me timing, give me time. If you let the market come to you, you'll do exceptionally well. If you read Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, if you haven't read it, you should. Obviously, you should reread it at least once a year. And I recently did a, a series on Jesse Livermore over when I had my stock chart show, Trading Simplified. And anyway, you get a lot of good wisdom from him. And, and throughout the book, he talks about various times where he felt like a market would do a certain thing, but price did not agree with him. And instead of waiting on price, he jumped the gun and he got into a lot of trouble. One thing I like to do, just as a side note, I get kind of excited when I see these markets breaking out intraday and I want to just jump on them a little bit outside the core methodology, still trend following, but a little outside the core methodology. And I know I've preached for years against day trading, but I'm here all day. Might as well do something, right? Especially now since I'm busy doing presentations for the, this one, for instance, week of charts, and then I'm doing appearances and presentations for stock charts still, even though my show has uh, has ended, I'm still doing a lot of other presentations. So I'm kind of not stuck here and I'm not, you know, don't feel bad for me. I'm very happy to be doing what I'm doing, but I do keep a loose eye on that screen all day long. And I will, if I'm not careful, I will feed that slot machine. And that's where you have to just sit back and wait. And, and one thing that I've done a lot more in recent times is if I really feel anxious and I really want to get in the market, I'll put in a stop order above the market. And I'm so shocked at how many times the market reverses. And just doing that exercise over and over again has taught me like, well, maybe you don't even want to put that stop order in. Maybe you just want to watch this thing and make sure you're not getting sucked into a false breakout. Anyway, this is another good quote from him. A man may see straight and clearly and yet become impatient or doubtful when the market takes its time. Amen. Like I just said, the stocks will trigger and they'll go sideways forever. I think K and F, we're in that now. That that went sideways forever, took off, went sideways forever, took off again. Knock on wood. Anyway, a man may see straight and clearly and yet become impatient or doubtful when the market takes its time about doing as he figured it must do. The market does not beat them they beat themselves because they have brains, because though they have brains, they cannot sit tight. 